In the headlines, APC screening committee disqualifies 10 presidential aspirants. Gas explosion in just 20 raises shops in Kano. Court remands Osinachi's husband in Kuje prison. And on the foreign scene, Kyrgyz Health Minister Bayshin Aliyev jailed for corruption. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. <music>we begin with politics where the all progressives congress presidential screening committee has disqualified 10 aspirants from its primaries scheduled for next week chairman of the committee john oyegun who revealed this on friday said only 13 out of the 23 aspirants screened were cleared by the committee however when asked about the identity of the disqualified aspirants oyegun declined to disclose the names Oyegun added that contrary to rumors making the rounds, it didn't screen former president Good Luck Jonathan. Claire aspirants are expected to contest the presidential primaries at a scheduled special convention in Abuja between June 6 and 8. The Independent National Electoral Commission has launched the regulations and guidelines for the conduct of general elections in the country. INEC Chairman Professor Mohamed Yakubu announced this on Friday during a meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja. According to the INEC chief, the electoral umpire has virtually concluded the planning processes for the 2023 polls nine months ahead of the elections with the release of the regulations and guidelines and earlier publication of the Strategic Plan 2022 to 2026 and Election Project Plan 2023. He revealed that the training manual would also be presented to Nigerians in the next couple of weeks, while INEC would focus on election administration in the areas of logistic training, voter education, technology, sensitization against vote buying, inclusivity measures and security. Presidential aspirant and national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu, on Thursday opened up on his role in the emergence of President Muhammadu Buhari as the president in 2015. The former Lagos state governor, while addressing the Ogun state APC delegates at the presidential lodge at Belkuta, said Buhari, after losing in 2003, 2007 and 2011 presidential elections, vowed not to contest again. Tinubu, however, said he went to Katsana to persuade Buhari to contest and subsequently supported him to win in 2015. Tinubu also took a swipe at one of his fellow presidential aspirants in the APC, the Vice President Professor Emil Shibaja, saying he nominated him as Buhari's running mate. Tinubu said without him, Dakwa Abiodun would not have been elected governor of Ogun State in 2019. the second time he failed the third he failed he even wept on national television and vowed never to contest again but i went to meet him in kaduna and told him that he will run again i will stand by you and you will win but you must not choke with your bars and he agreed since he became the president i have never gotten ministerial slot that boy that's sitting down here could he have become the governor without me we were at the stadium they tore all his posters even the party flag, they didn't want to hand over to him. I was the one who brought him. Still in politics, son of the former governor of Nasarawa State, late Aliu Akwe Doma, has picked the Nasarawa State governorship ticket of the Zenith Labour Party. Abu Bakr Abdullahi reports that Umar Aliu Akwe Doma emerged through a voice vote. The report. The emergence of late Nasarawa State Governor's son as ZLP governorship candidate followed a motion for his affirmation by Musa Ihimoga, member Doma North constituency at the Nasarawa State House of Assembly and seconded by Mr. David Iposhi. I stand here to make the motion for the affirmation of the one and only candidate of our great party, in personal those in favor of this motion say aye. Aye. Say, say aye, 
speaking to newsmen shortly after the Congress, Thomas said he felt a sense of duty and responsibility to fly the party's flag once again for the governorship position in Nasarawa State in 2023. The reason why I have decided to aspire once again is because the same reasons that led me to aspire in 2019 still abound. Nasrallah State was created, beheaded by its founding fathers to be able to pool resources, both human and material, for the development of the people. Doma promised to ensure an agricultural revolution in the state, noting that as an agrarian state, Nasrallah requires a revamped agricultural sector that is technologically driven for more development to thrive. The ZLP candidate alleged that successive administrations in the state failed to prioritize the silent resources that should drive the state development. He promised to reintroduce a modified version of Badakoshi agricultural program of his late father, taking into cognizance some of the factors that impeded its successful implementation. The governorship hopeful also said the youth will be given their pride of place in his administration if given the mandate in 2023. The late Aliu Akwe Doma, father of ZLP candidate, governed the state between year 2007 to 2011 on the platform on People's Democratic Party. On a sad note, a gas explosion has injured at least 20 people and raised several shops at Sheikha quarters, Kumbozo local government area of Keno State. The explosion reportedly went off around 8 p.m. on Thursday at a gas cylinder refilling shop. A resident of the area, Malam Edi, said the gas exploded, burning several said the gas exploded, burning several people and shops. He said the incident affected mostly persons in the gas shop and other business owners in the adjacent shops. Confirming the incident, the spokesperson for the Keno State Fire Service, Sami Nu Yusuf, put the figure of victims at 20. The Federal Capital Territory High Court in the Wuse area of Abuja has remanded Peter Nwachuku, husband of late gospel singer Osanachi in the Kluje Correctional Facility. The presiding judge, Justice Njideka Ngosu Iheme, gave the order on Friday after he pleaded not guilty to 23 charges bordering on domestic violence and homicide, among others. She ordered that the suspect be remanded at the correctional facility while the trial was adjourned to June 16 and June 17. Mwajiko will be in prison pending the hearing and determination of the homicide-related suit instituted against him by the Attorney General of the Federation. The gospel singer died on April 8, and many of her colleagues had accused her husband of subjecting the victim to domestic violence, which led to her death. Still on judicial matters, a federal high court in Abuja will on August 29 deliver judgment in the extradition suit filed by the Attorney General of the Federation against the suspended DCP Abbakari over his alleged link with Ramon Abbas a.k.a. Hush Puppy, an alleged internet fraud star held in the United States. Justice Inyang Echo fixed the date after counsel for the parties in the suit adopted their processes and presented their arguments in the matter. The federal government had sought Carey's extradition to the U.S. to answer a case over his alleged link with Hush Puppy. The application was filed under the Extradition Act as part of the Nigerian government's approval of the request by the U.S. for Carey's extradition. The Lagos state government says about 5,000 motorcycles have been crushed in the first quarter of 2022. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Bengal Motoshaw, who made this known at the crushing site in Alausa, said the crushing of 2,000 bikes on Friday is an indication of how serious the government is in its enforcement. According to him, the government had to take the enforcement seriously due to the alarming rate of road accidents, noting that this year alone about 1,712 have been recorded. Of this number, 
He said 767 were due to Okada accidents, adding that 49% of people who died are young adults between the ages of 30 to 39. Our correspondent reports that 21 violators who were arrested have been taken to court. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Reaction trail cuts in our first flyover. Stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. You heard that APC screening committee disqualifies 10 presidential aspirants. We also told you that gas explosion in just 20 raises shops in Kano. In health, the Center for Information Technology and Development has confirmed an outbreak of monkeypox in eight Nigerian states, including the FCT. Coordinator for the COVID-19 vaccine project, Hamza Ibrahim, says a 40-year-old patient who has an underlying medical condition has been killed by the virus. Meanwhile, the center also confirmed that there is a significant progress in reporting gender-based violence across Kano State during the month of May 2022. The states are Adama with five cases, Lagos four, Bielsa two, Delta two, Cross River 2, FCT 2, Kano State 2, Imo State 2, and Rivers 1. According to NCDC, of the 21 cases, death was reported in a 40-year-old patient who had underlying comorbidity and was on immunosuppressive medications. The detection of the virus ought to be an alarm for particularly the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, and we want to, at this point, strongly call on the center, that is the NCDC, to deploy active observatory mechanism across the Federation with a view to contain further spread of the virus. Arise the data collected for the month of May on the occurrence of gender-based violence in Kano State. In comparison with the data obtained in previous months, GDP cases are still on the increase. 85 cases were reported via our GBB application for the months, which include sexual harassment, online harassment, sexual abuse, and white battering. From the data obtained, we can deduce that our monitors and the general public are beginning to acknowledge the importance of reporting gender-based violence 
which is an encouraging news as this will assist us in our advocacies. The Katsina state government is focused on reducing poverty, especially among people with special needs, women and children, as well as other vulnerable groups. This is why it has met with heads of social protection policy implementation agencies, MDAs and partners. Abdullahi Amadi reports. The aim of this gathering is to come up with well-coordinated strategies through which poverty will be reduced to the barest minimum among the over 9 million people of Kazakhstan State. It means the coordination and implementation of social protection policy programs must be reviewed to ensure that they have optimally achieved the objective for which they were initiated. UNICEF Field Officer Ramatu Aliu is confident that the collaboration between the UN body and the Kazakhstan state government is being felt by the citizens of the state. We have an implementation framework, we have a meal plan, but it has not been approved by the state government. But as MDAs and technical supporters, UNICEF, we're still hoping and working with the state to make sure that we don't lose the momentum of getting this policy approved by the state. The key to success is the resilience of participants, which is essential to the poverty reduction policy. It's basically reviewing we reviewed the terms of reference for the technical working group we looked at the previous terms of reference for the twg that were given during the development of the social protection policy and now that the social protection policy is already in place so we reviewed the terms of references to suit the implementation of the policy as well if the social protection policy document is approved by the Kazakhstan State Executive Council, it will serve as a roadmap towards actualizing the poverty reduction program. I will discuss how to organize all social protection activities. It just to come in a single umbrella. We want to coordinate the activities of social protection instead of going on plan. But now we try to address the activities so that it will be 100% uh, coordinated. Experts say a significant number of people in Kazakhstan state, especially those with special needs, women and children, live below the poverty line. So um, the state uh, has made tremendous effort to see how they can reduce this issue through the provision of social protection programs across the state. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to bring all key social protection programs um, partners together as stakeholders to begin to review how they're doing and progressing and what needs to be done in order for them to function at maximum capacity. Recommendations sent to Governor Amini Bella Masari include the removal of the economic barrier preventing the poor and vulnerable from education and health. They also include the inclusion of people with special needs in governance, social and economic sectors to help bridge the existing gap between the rich and the poor in Kazakhstan State. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazakhstan. Similarly, Katsina State Governor Amina Bello Masari on Tuesday flagged off the first flyover interchange road network in Katsina State, estimated to have cost 4.3 billion naira. At the flag off event, Masari declared that Katsina has now joined the League of States with embedded flyovers in their capitals. Zemil Mabai has more details. <laughs> The flag off is part of the government's plan to improve urban infrastructure in Katsina State. Have come out of that. The governor, Aminu Masari, said the contractor has been paid 50% of the cost of project, adding that it would be delivered within 12 months. He explained that the project, the third of its kind in the state, would reduce traffic congestion in the government reserved area of Katsina Metropoli. I believe that whichever government comes in must concentrate on the development of our inner cities to reduce the heavy congestion 
what we are witnessing today is part of a moderate effort in terms of actualizing what we have promised to the people of Katana State. Months ago, the state government embarked on two other interchange flyovers and underpass in Kofar Kwaya and Kofar Kaura, with few months to general elections and by implication, the end of the present administration. There are concerns in some quarters over the completion of these projects. While many celebrate the coming of these flyovers, small businesses, shops, and residents are negatively impacted as they are forced to relocate to other places. <laughs> Ma'aruf bin Dawa and his father have been carrying business for over 20 years. Even though they are happy, they have no option but to leave. To be frank, we are not happy, but since it's a government project. As the masses, we have no option. We have to obey the government. Most of us run our businesses on credit. We don't even know where to go. Behind me is another four billion project of uh, construction of flyover and underpass by the Katsina state government. If you could recall a few months ago, the state government has embarked on the construction of uh, two flyovers in Kofar Kaura and Kofar Kwaya areas. And uh, this is the third phase of flyovers we're seeing in Katsina. And according to contractors, the, the duration of the project, it's going to be 12 months. The demolition process has started and a lot of people are concerned, majorly when it comes to traffic, because this area is one of the centers that links the major roads in Katsina State. And if you can look around, you can see majority of businesses are going to be affected by this project. But as far as the government is concerned, this is another achievement, another success. One thing is clear. Urban infrastructure will lead to better interstate transport system, but it comes with economic consequences, one of which small business owners like Ma'aruf and the hundreds of businesses will be affected. Jamil Mabai, Trust TV News, Kazana. And on the foreign scene, Kyrgyzstan's health minister who recommended a poisonous route as a treatment for coronavirus has been jailed following a corruption probe linked to the purchase of COVID vaccines, prosecutors said on Friday. Alim Kader Bashan Aliyev has been nicknamed Aconite for promoting a homemade liquid solution based on poisonous roots, also known as wolf's bane, to cure coronavirus and other diseases. Prosecutors said Bashan Aliyev was involved in the purchase of more than 2 million coronavirus vaccine doses over national requirements, proceeds from which were transferred to offshore accounts. The money spirited away totaled $19 million, a statement said. Bashan Aliyev has been under pressure with his deputies in May, calling off his sacking and accusing him of bullying ministry employees, including using sexual taunts. And finally, in sports, the Boston Celtics hit nine three-pointers in the final quarter to overturn a 12-point deficit and beat the Golden State Warriors 120-108 in Game 1 of the NBA Finals. Stephen Curry hit a game-high 34 points for the Warriors, who led 92-80 and had not lost in their nine previous home games in the season's playoffs, but Jalen Brown hit 10 points in the final quarter to spark a Celtics win. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thank you for watching.